On October 15, 1991, the University of Utah's Fly's Eye Cosmic Ray Detector saw one of the most powerful particles ever detected in the history of humanity. It was the first time we've seen something of this class. This particle, which we're pretty sure was a proton, was traveling this close to the speed of light. I'm not sure. I'm going to read it off here. And this is not an exaggeration. And I hope I, I'm counting all these nines right. Check this out. This particle, this one particle was traveling at 99 99.9999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999999
And the immediate question is, who the heck is generating particles like this? Where in the universe are these kinds of particles coming from? You need something powerful. You need a lot of raw energy to get this going, right? And you need strong magnetic fields because these are charged particles. And you need to you need to whip them up. You need to move them. You need to accelerate them. And that takes magnetic fields. Who's, who's doing it? Who's doing it? Who's making all these? Well, we have a few suspects, all right? And you can start thinking about what are the energetic magnetized events in our universe, like supernova. Supernova have a lot of energy. Supernova have a lot of shock waves and shock fronts and blasts, and they have strong magnetic fields, but supernova ain't powerful enough. Supernova by themselves are not powerful enough to accelerate a particle to the range of the OMG. The OMG class, the ultra high energy, it just can't do it. What about a gamma ray burst? Gamma ray bursts, we're not exactly sure what they are, but we think they might be the deaths of the most massive stars, a particular kind of supernova, maybe as as it transitions from neutron star to black hole. And then as material falls into that black hole, it might ignite a flare or something like that. It's a little bit fuzzy. We're not exactly sure. Details are complicated. We've done some modeling and it just doesn't seem like the physics is right. The the mix of the duration of the events, where the energy is ejected into the system, where and how the magnetic fields are configured, just doesn't give the right mix to make an OMG particle. Well, what about AGN, active galactic nuclei? You know, the, the supermassive black holes feeding in the center of their host galaxy. Matter is swirling in and forming an accretion disk, and it's bright, and it's hot, and it's crazy. Definitely tons of energy, by far the most powerful engines in the universe, but they're far away. Active galactic nuclei are, as a rule, generally far from the Earth. They happened earlier in the epoch or in earlier epochs of the history of the universe, which means they're far away from us in space right now. And these ultra high energy particles, when you're traveling that close to the speed of light, you run into some issues traveling intergalactic distances. The issues you run into is the cosmic microwave background. The leftover light from the early universe that just soaks every cubic centimeter of the volume of space It's in the microwave, it's low energy, and usually nobody cares about it. But when you're traveling that fast, that radiation, that background radiation, gets blue shifted to higher energies. It becomes gamma rays instead of microwaves, and those gamma rays slam into you as the particle and pull energy away from you. So it's like It's like trying to plow through a hailstorm, like everybody's just hitting you and you're going to peter out and you're going to lose energy. So this puts a distance limit of around 160 million light years for any ultra high energy cosmic rays. And AGN generally are just too far away. If they are generating OMG particles, they're not going to reach us here on Earth. So it has to be powerful. It has to be magnetized and it has to be close, relatively close by in our nearby universe. We don't think it's happening in our own galaxy because there's nothing powerful enough in our own galaxy. For a while, we thought maybe it's Centaurus A. Centaurus A is the nearest active galactic nucleus. It's uh, 10 to 16 million light years away. Relatively rare in the present day universe, but there's one. And... Over the decades, there have been some hints that maybe cosmic rays are concentrated in that part of the sky, but then further observations say, no, 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 that was just a statistical fluke and wishful thinking. They're really spread more evenly. So if Centaurus A is producing cosmic rays, it's not like an overwhelming generator of them. So cosmic rays are probably coming from somewhere else. It could be from a Seaforts. Seaforts are a kind of active galactic nuclei that are relatively close but relatively quiet. They're not as radio loud as other active galactic nuclei, the more active ones. So, like slightly retired active galactic nuclei, semi retirement, you know, maybe they have a part time job. Uh, it's still hanging on, you know, so they, 
stay active. But again, the seaferts aren't really connected. We know where the seaferts are. They're like there, 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 there. And then we ask where are the cosmic rays coming from, especially the OMG type ones. And they're all over the place. And it's not like they're connected. Like, oh yeah, every time we look in the direction of a seafert, we get lots of cosmic rays coming from that direction. That, that statistical link just doesn't work. Part of the problem is we only have like 100 ultra high energy cosmic rays known and detected. So it's kind of hard to get good statistics there. So what else could it be? Is it weird stuff? Is it like artifacts, topological defects from the early universe? Is it dark matter doing something funny? Maybe that seems, you know, that that's possible, but doesn't seem plausible because there should be other effects that we would have noticed more than just ultra high energy cosmic rays. And we don't see those other effects. Is physics wrong? Because, because this uh, distance limit of 160 million light years, that, that depends on our having a good handle on special relativity. Maybe special relativity is broken at certain energy scales. But again, if it's going to break there, it's going to break in some other places and we don't see it broken in other places. So it's hard to build a consistent theory there from those statements. The leaning right now, and this is, honestly, this is an open question. The leaning right now is that it might have something to do with flares or transient events where there's an active galactic nucleus that nucleus maybe nearby that's relatively quiet maybe not actively feeding continuously so it doesn't brighten in our sky it's not like a large continuous source but then every once in a while it gobbles something down and it burps and it has the right energetic combination to spit out some of these ultra high energy cosmic rays and we see them on earth but then by the time we see the cosmic ray we go looking in that part of the sky, and we're like, we got nothing. There's nothing bright going on because it was just a temporary flash. The answer could be there. We honestly don't know. We need a lot more cosmic ray observations, and we need a lot more understanding of transient phenomena in the sky. We got it. We want to know when supernova are going off or just flaring, when stars are having heart attacks, when active galactic nuclei are doing something funny, where we can start to pin down sources that may not last for a year, may only last a few days or a week, but have the right energies to make these big cosmic rays. We honestly don't know. It's this. It's a wonderful, fun, open question in modern astronomy is who is responsible for the OMG particles? So check back in in another 10 years. I might have an answer for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit like. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification icon so you know when I go live. If I would really appreciate any contributions to help keep this, these science projects going, go to patreon.com slash PMSR. There's a link up there in the video. Go watch another video. Tell your friends about it. Talk about it on social media or something. I don't know. Just, just do whatever you want. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.